was your what did you do when you walked across the stage? Yeah, I just hit him with a hit him with a huge flex, two time flex. I just yeah. um that was a lot for me, but also like for a lot of people back home that kinda just know what this moment means to me and, and uh how proud I was of myself. But I was the last person in the entire ceremony to get announced. So in, in some ways, like being such a big fight fan, like that almost felt like main <laughs> event was walking across the stage and just like, you know, man, it just felt like just felt so good to just flex and just be like, ah, like I did that. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like you've been, you've been grinding the gym for like 20 months and you finally look in the mirror one day and you're like, damn, I'm, I'm looking good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it felt like, you know, but I just had to flex cause like that was the emotion that I could, you know, it was just raw, man. Like that was just so much passion that was coming out of me and, you know, I had my family in the crowd and just kind of flexing for them and, you know, giving the fist pump just, Man, that was that moment was just super, super special for me. How was it spending time with your family as a graduate? Man, as a kid, not as a kid, but in high school, as a 16, 17 year old kid, like I, I always told myself, like I'd never be, I'd never graduate college. I'm never going to school and, and all that stuff. And so to graduate the day before my 25th birthday was was just truly a special moment for me. Like being able to celebrate with my family and just. You know, hearing compliments has never been like the easiest thing for me, and but that day it was for some reason because I was like, man, I did that. Like, you earned it. Exactly, and there was nobody else that could take. And there's nobody that could ever take that away from me. You know, no matter what happens to my life, like I'll always be able to say to myself that I I graduated college, and that means a whole lot to me because I graduated high school with a 2.2 GPA. Man, I was academically ineligible to play sports as a sophomore, and then to you know come here and you know graduate with almost a 3.9 GPA and valedictorian was just. It was just crazy, just crazy and, and just really special because the valedictorian meant a lot to me because there could be five people in my class, there could be a hundred. It didn't matter. Like, that was for me. You know what I mean? Like, Hell yeah. Like, to myself that I, if I wanted to work hard in school, like, I could. And I could achieve greatness in school. And I proved that to myself. And um, like I said before, like, if I could just go to a sports school, like, I promise you I'd be the best. And that was nice to me to, like, live up to that expect expectation for myself. But I'm not grind it for 20 months. I deserved that. And I'm, I was super proud of myself. Before I get so a little bit further into the future, I'm gonna back up into the school a little bit. What was your experience when you met Dan Patrick? I was first time I met him. I was super nervous, uh, super nervous, because I listened to him my whole life, right. you know, and I just wanted to tell him, you know, like just thank you and for making the school, and thank you for, you know, you know, my, me and my dad have bonded over, you know, listening to Dan for so many years and and stuff like that. It's been in, incredible, but. The second time I met him was when I read the uh, highlight in front of him in the studio. And when he gave me sick feedback and I did really good and he's like, that's how you show energy when you do a highlight. Like, man, that changed everything for me and my confidence. Um, because I was like, dude, I knew I could do this. Like, I knew I could do this. And just like having Rishi tell you in your ear 10 seconds before you go live, oh, by the way, the big man's in here. It's just like, well, I'm either fight or flight right now. And, right. And you know, I wasn't stepping out of that cage, I'll tell you that much. Uh, then I, after a couple other times I've met him, it's been more comfortable. Um, you know, I did a feedback with him and he gave me great feedback on my highlights, uh, on my, you know, writing and just how to just go to an even other level. It's nice when it's nice when they're nitpicking your stuff because that means you've built a great foundation for yourself. But now the next step is just going to the next level with nuances, little things, inflection, catchphrases, you know, how you um, staying in the right verbiage tense, just little things like that. And so now it's pretty comfortable when I talk to him and, and listening to his show is it's pretty funny because um, I've met him so many times now. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big inspiration for me because of like just how hard he works and how much he loves sports, man. Really quickly, what's your catchphrase? Man, I don't really have a catchphrase. I just, you know, everybody that knows me knows that, you know, whenever I dap you up and say bye, it's always much love, man. Like, that's, that's what I'm about. I, I think this world has so much damn hate and, and so much damn negativity that, like, the only thing that truly brings people together in this world, like truthfully, is, is love, man. Like everybody can connect over that, man. Like we, and I think the world needs more of it. And I just try to express that to all my homies and all my friends, because, um, you know, no matter if you're, you know, one of my best friends as a guy or a girl, like I'm gonna tell you, I love you. If I do, I do. You know, I mean, I, I don't have friends. I just have family, and I truly yep. mean that because you know, family's forever, and, and, and friends hang out every once in a while. And so that you know, much love is, is always you know kind of been my catchphrase i was say that, that was my that's what i think your catchphrase is we're not friends with family you told me that so many times and i believe that to my heart and, and that's real because you know 
when, when your friends show you, when, when your friends act and uh, treat you like family, then that's what they are. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I like to think that people that get close to me um, truly know me and, and I've connected with them and, and that and I trust them and that means they're family because friends are friends are fine like you know you hang out every once in a while and, and you connect but man, when you got family it's a deeper level of connection and love and, and um, willingness to do something to help a homie or, or just be there for somebody you know what I'm saying I know you got it you already had received a job offer already in Minnesota mm -hmm. and I I want to know I just want to figure out how I want to work this and I'm gonna go and let you get out the door pretty soon I know you got to hit the golf swings but what's in future for Parkaway um, immediately I'm moving back to Cali for a little bit just because I can save some money and, and, uh, and find a job, but man, I came to this school with one goal. I've always, no matter what I do in life, there's always one goal and this is part of the mom mentality. I mean, like, it's to be the best. It's to be the greatest at what I do. Um, I'm not saying I, I'm going to be better than this person, that person, and be the greatest sports caster of all time, but... And I'll be damned if I can't go for the best of my generation or, you know, the best of this sport or the best of that, you know. Um, if you don't set goals for yourself that are higher than anybody else thinks are attainable, then, you know, what are you striving for? Um, because if you achieve, if you shoot for the greatest of all time, like, then what's right below that? Like, right. you're in the top five, you're, in the top <laughs> one, like you're on the list, you know what I'm saying? So um, the future for me, hopefully, is, is um, I want to do play-by-play. -play. That's my love. That's my passion. There's something... There's an energy about being in the building, being just being in the atmosphere, man. Like when somebody makes a big shot, like I called a couple game Rollins games this year, and somebody dropped 49, some kid dropped 38 and forced OT. Like those moments are just like, damn, like I miss being in a gym. I miss mm. being in that atmosphere. I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. Just like watching people perform, man. Like that is what I feel like I'm destined to do is call games. Um, but right now, man, it's just get my foot in the door. Get, like, sh sh I'm never afraid of hard work. I've never been afraid of hard work. I've never been afraid of, of proving myself. Um, because that's what I've had to do my whole life. You know what I mean? Um, it, I, I'm not afraid of any of that. And hopefully it's, you know, getting into a, a market that I, I really like and um, covering sports that I really enjoy and then working my way up through the play-by-play -play industry. And the goal in life is to call the biggest fights in the world. Yep. The biggest fights in the world for the UFC. If not, um, I'll be damned if I ain't working for the Lakers with Chargers. <laughs> that is so perfect. It's like you just walking me down to my questions. And this and this answer just requires a number. Number eight, Kobe, or number 24, Kobe? Uh, 24 is probably more my generation of, of Kobe. Uh, but Froby is... Froby was a damn fool. Like, that man was so athletic. Three championships by the time he was, what, 24, I believe? Yep. Um, but when he went to 24, that felt like the shift of the of the Kobe that we saw in, this, in, in the second half of his life. Um, the one that, like, was a killer, but, like, still had that love and, like, in him and stuff like that. But, man, when he turned to 24, like, it felt like the league and everybody else was just like, oh, this is danger. Because, like, when he went to 24, I was like, oh, he's not going for MJ. Like, he's trying to be one better than MJ in everything. He wore yep. 10 on the Olympics. That was not a surprise. He, MJ wore nine for right. Team USA. And when Kobe went to 24, I was just like, oh, okay. There's, like, a flip. A switch was just flipped. And um, I think he won the MVP, like, the next year. And then they went to three straight finals after that. So oh, My phone is going off, which is very rude. You get hit up later. But I, I'd go 24, but I'm fine. Like, Froby and the Black Mamba, it's like, there's two Hall of Fames right there. Right, it is. And um, you ain't got to go too long and too depth into this question, but when did you start the mustache? Mm, um, it was. It used to be, like, really short. I used to shave it all the time off my face. Um, probably when I was, like, I probably started when I was 20, maybe, when I started going to the bars and stuff like that and, like, wanted to look like I was older than I actually was. Um... <laughs> But the mustache like it is now in this iteration probably started uh, maybe about three and a half, four years ago. Um, I was bartending at a whiskey bar, uh, at a whiskey bar and uh, I don't know, I just felt like I needed some facial hair to match like the style. Like I just, I wanted to represent it. And then um, when I started really growing it, my mom hated it like with a passion. So it started to be a spike thing. And then as it grew longer, I was like, maybe I can do something with this. Um, and now this mustache just made for TV, baby. It is. Uh, it is. It's just made for TV. Um, but I, I, I mean, I love it. It's kind of like just part of my personality, and it's, it's just kind of like uh, 
just something that I love and uh, <laughs> it makes it makes me unique and man I get a lot of compliments on it but Fats. shit it's a uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work to maintain it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I remember before we even cut the camera on, you was all, you was already combing it before yeah, we started it. In my mouth or on my face or nothing. I'm trying to look good for the camera, but um, I feel like I'm trying to like the mullet's back. I feel like I've I, I was on the beginning wave of bringing the mustache back. You know, I was before like it, the top. You know, somebody asked me if I started growing it after fucking Top Gun Maverick. I was like, no. Why would I ever do that? Right. Like, I'm, I was before the game. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, no, it's all good. I, I mean, I love I love having the mustache. I probably need some trimming in, in every once in a while, but it's part it's part of my brand. It's part of my personality, man. It, it, it makes me stick out. Man, I want to thank Mr. Parkaway for coming on. This was so dope, man. This was P-Way, man, the mumble enthusiast just like myself. He was so great, so great here. Like, it's going to be kind of difficult for me and my boys to try to, you know, do what my man's did, but we're going to try to keep the legacy going along. Yeah, but I'll, this say, I'll say one thing on the way out. Shout out. To Snooty, I mean, this guy is one of the realists in the game. I, I mean, I love this guy. He's, fam he's family to me. He's, he's going places in this world. And, and the work ethic that you display is inspiring to me. You know, obviously, we're a little bit older than, than most of the people that we, uh, you know, we go to school with. And so, you know, just keep grinding, man. Like, this is this is inspiring, just sitting down and being able to talk and shoot shit for an hour and, you know, be on your podcast and stuff. I mean, we're all going to achieve great things in the world. But everybody check out Snooty Lounge Podcast. This is the spot to be. Man, come check it out. Thank you, P. Way. Like, uh, we're gonna chit chat more off camera, but like, I just really appreciate P. Way, man. I love you, bro. You, you family. We family, and uh, hopefully the Hawks can beat the Lakers this year. Well, I heard him try to cut the camera off. Much love. <laughs> Much love. Welcome to Snooty Podcast.